In 50 minutes, Bill Oddie and the team ferret out more facts. First on BBC One, we meet Sparky and his magic piano. Sparky was a little boy just eight years old. That's Sparky you hear taking his piano lesson. His mother insisted that he practice one hour every day when he would rather be outside playing baseball. That is, until one day, a very strange thing happened. Sparky, that's no better than last week. Have you been practicing every day? Well, you see, I... Uh... You haven't, have you? Hmm? Sparky, you'll never become a good pianist if you don't practice. It takes work, Sparky, work. Gosh, Miss Pickett, I hate to practice. You wouldn't hate it if you knew what a pleasure music can be. I wish there was some way you could know what it's like to be able to play the piano well. Now, I expect more from you next week. Yes, ma'am. You're lucky, Beans. You just lie around all day. You don't have to practice or anything. Practice, practice, practice. That's all I ever hear. I hate you, Pierre. You hear? I hate you. Yes, I hear you, Sparky. Who, who said that? It is I, oh. your piano. But, but, but you're talking. Yes, I can talk. And I can play myself. You can play yourself? Play what? Anything you ask for. All you have to do is run your hands over my keys. I just have to run my hands over your keys? And you'll play? I don't believe you. Try me. Well, okay. I'm going to try that piece my teacher sometimes plays for me. That revolutionary etude by Chopin. Chopin, Sparky, Chopin. Okay, Chopin. Here goes. <laughs> still here? No, Mom. She left. Then who was that playing? Uh, well, I was, Mother. Sparky, that's not funny. Now, where's Miss Pickett? She's gone, Mom. I was playing. Honest. Okay, Smarty. Do it while I watch this time. Sure, Mom. <laughs> over as fast as I could. What's the emergency? Just come in the living room. Sparky, 
play something for Miss Pickett. How about Fantasy Impromptu? Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu? Oh, come now, Sparky. Can you do a piano? Yes, Sparky. Sparky ran his fingers over the piano. Somehow they magically seemed to follow all the right keys, as though he were really playing. His mom was so excited that she ran to get Sparky's dad. Martha, have you gone crazy? He can, he can, I tell you. You dragged me away from my office for some kind of a joke. What's the... Henry, just listen. Be quiet and listen. All right, all right. Go ahead, boy wonder. Let's get this nonsense over with. Sure, Dad. Mozart Sonata in C. I'll be happy to Sparky. Sparky's dad could not believe that it was really Sparky playing, and he looked everywhere, trying to find where the music was coming from. He could find nothing. That night, Miss Pickett came to the house. I think we should start with a small auditorium first, like in, say, ooh, Pittsburgh. Can you arrange it? Well, I think so. I know a concert promoter Now, who, wait, uh, hold it. What in the world are you talking about? Sparky on a concert tour? Henry, Miss Pickett says he's the finest pianist she has ever heard. It's true. Sparky is a musical genius. A musical genius? You saw him play, Henry. Well, that one piece, but... That was only a sample of what he can do. He can play anything you ask him to. Miss Pickett... He's incredible, Henry. Just listen to him play again. All right, I'll... Ask him to play anything. All right. Sparky. Yes, Dad? Can you play, uh, let's see, uh, Chopin's Waltz in C-sharp minor? Sure, Dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Chopin. Okay, Sparky.
he's able to do that, but I've got to admit, he is remarkable. Dad finally began to believe that it really was Sparky playing. However, Sparky is still a little boy. It's one thing to play for us in the living room, but what would happen to him if he were to play in concert halls in front of huge audiences? No telling how all of that would affect him. But Henry... And what about his education? <laughs> I'm sorry, but for now he will remain in school. So any idea about Sparky playing on a concert tour is out of the question. He stays in school where he belongs. But, Henry... But, please... Ladies, the matter is closed. But to Mom and Miss Pickett, the matter was not closed. And a week later, they took Sparky for his first concert in Pittsburgh. Dad must have been awful mad when he came home and found us gone. <sighs> well, he'll get over it when he hears about tonight's concert. I'll call later and read in the reviews. I know that they'll just be wonderful. I'm scared, Mom. You'll be fine, Sparky. Miss Pickett and I are here with you. And Beans, too. But I don't know why you insisted on having your own piano sent all this way. We could have gotten you a concert grand. Maybe it's just as well. He seems to be more comfortable with it. Besides, I've never heard it sound so good. There must be a hundred people out there. We are covering this concert only because our editor insisted. Who is this Sparky anyway? I never heard of him. He's only eight years old. Another child prodigy. Nothing worse than a little kid at the piano. Being music critic for National Magazine takes us to some very boring evenings. Isn't that right, Sam? Boring. We are leaving it intermission. We're leaving it intermission. That's your cue, Sparky. Go ahead. Go on, honey. They're waiting. For my first number, I shall play Beethoven's Sonata Pathétique. Watch him murder Beethoven. Anything I can't stand is a child prodigy. Okay, piano. Okay, Sparky. boy named Sparky amazed a small audience at his first concert with a performance which is being talked about all over the city. The little boy is being compared to Horowitz or Rubinstein and the greatest pianists of our age. His technique and sensitivity brought raves from all who were there to hear him. Many musicians interviewed have expressed strong doubts that an eight-year-old could play as well as has been reported. Nevertheless, requests for concert appearances are pouring in from all over the world. Be sure that demand for tickets will be heavy, particularly from other pianists.
the audience gave Sparky a tremendous ovation. But Max, the critic, was not convinced. Sure, there were only a few hundred people there last night. Tonight, we sold out with standing room. It's been all over the news. Thousands are being turned away. It's the biggest thing we've ever had. I've got to call Henry and tell him the good news. I don't care what they're saying. He should be back here in school. I want you to catch the next plane and... Well, then cancel the tour. I want him out. <sighs> that does it. I'm coming out there as soon as I can get away from the office. I'll see you in New York. Sparky's next concert was at Orchestra Hall in Chicago. He played the Brahms Waltz in A-flat. some kind. No eight-year-old can play like that. It's a trick, I tell you. And I'm gonna find out how he does it. After the concert, Sparky went to the opening night reception. Oh, you darling child, you're so wonderful. I can't tell you how much I enjoy the concert. Thank you, ma'am. My dear boy, won't you come to my home tomorrow night? I would just love to give a party for you. Quiet beans. That would be lovely, wouldn't it, Sparky? Uh, excuse me, I'm Sparky's teacher. Everybody, but just everybody would be there. We would love to come, wouldn't we, Sparky? Oh, do come, dear child. All of Chicago society will be invited, and I will have the mayor as well. Well, I simply can't take no for an answer. Of course not. Sparky? Dear boy? I'll have to let you know, if my schedule permits. You see, I open in Los Angeles on Thursday. Sparky was getting to be a spoiled little boy, and he never did go to the party in Chicago. When he opened at the Hollywood Bowl, the whole town came to see him. Even the movie stars. A blimp was flying overhead. Step right up, get your sparky t-shirts. Here they are, folks. Get your sparky souvenirs. Get your sparky souvenirs and t-shirts. The most important people in Hollywood were in their boxes. Even the Hollywood sign said it loved Sparky. Sparky played the Greek Concerto in A minor.
back home, Dad was packing. He was going to drive his car to New York to be there in time for Sparky's concert at Carnegie Hall. to continue his tour. What would you like for dessert, Master Sparky? I'll have a chocolate sundae with pistachio ice cream, and some raspberries on the top, and some nuts too, and plenty of whipped cream with a cherry on top of that. I'll get it right away. And bring the same for my dog, Beans. For the dog? Yes, for my dog. He has a first class seat too, doesn't he? Now hurry it up if you don't mind. We land in Boston in an hour. Sparky was becoming more spoiled than ever, but Mom and Miss Pickett did not seem to notice. In Boston, Sparky appeared at Symphony Hall, where he played Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody. Dad, on his way to New York, was having car trouble, while Sparky traveled in style. Sparky's next concert was in Cleveland, where he played the beautiful Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. just in time as Sparky was playing the classic Soaring by Schumann. Look at you, you look like... like... Now, Henry. After all, I have to meet a lot of important people and... All right, young man, you get off those silly clothes and get into your blue jeans. You're coming home with me. Now, Father, you have to understand I cannot do that. You see, I'm a musical genius, and I need to continue my concert tour. I cannot disappoint my audience. Why, you... you... you spoiled little brat. What you need is a good spank. Henry! Intermission is over, Master Sparky. <laughs> Dad was very angry, but he could hardly follow Sparky out on the stage. Anyway, Beans wouldn't let him. Sparky played a very difficult piece called the banjo by Gottschalk as Dad went out into the lobby. Ugh. Dad apologized to Max for knocking him down and explained that he was Sparky's dad. Which gave Max an idea. Max 
Brooks was up to no good, and while the concert continued, he went off with Sam. Max was looking for a piano store. Sam, always hungry, was more interested in something to eat. The first piano store did not have what Max was looking for. Nor did the second piano store. Max finally found just the kind of piano he wanted. Meanwhile, back at Carnegie Hall, Sparky continued his concert. Max handed a note to the piano store owner which read, Delivered to the Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C. The concert was still going on when Max and Sam finally arrived. something no pianist has ever done before. I shall play Chopin's Minute Waltz, but I shall play it in half a minute. Now the kid's gone too far. It's not possible to play the Minute Waltz in half a minute. It's not? Oh, my. <laughs> He's going to make a fool of himself. No question. It can't be done. You ready, piano? You told me you can do it. I can, but we've got to talk. I don't like the way you've been acting. Not now, not now. Later, we'll talk later. Now play, everyone's waiting. All right. But you'd better change your attitude. Or else. <laughs> Somehow, my son is tricking us all. You have my approval to proceed with your plan. That night, after the concert, TV crews arrived to interview Sparky. Oh, Henry, I'm so glad you've agreed to let Sparky continue his tour. I knew once you saw him in concert that... Well, after all, he is my son, too. And if he can really play that well, I mean... If he can play that well, then I'll let him continue. What do you mean, if? You heard him? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, excuse me, folks. I think we're about ready. Let me see. Sparky, why don't we interview you sitting at the concert grand instead of your old upright? You know, it's more class, okay? Sure, that would be fine. Now, Sparky, I'm going to ask you a few questions. You say whatever you like. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Good. This is going to be on the evening news, so we better get started. All right, you guys, you ready? Anytime, Walter. Good evening. 
We are on stage here at Carnegie Hall, where Sparky, tonight, played Chopin's Minute Waltz in a half a minute. Tell me, Sparky, how did you manage to do it? It must have taken a tremendous amount of practice. Not really. It's easy for me. But every pianist in the world has said it's not possible. Surely, there must be some explanation of how you've learned to play with such speed. I guess I was just born with this great talent. It's hard to explain true genius, I suppose. It just happens maybe once in a lifetime. I work very closely with Sparky. I'm his teacher, Sarah Pickett. Well, Miss Pickett, perhaps you can tell us how Sparky became such an outstanding pianist at such an early age. Well, <laughs> of course, I taught him everything I know. You see, I've been teaching piano for almost 20 years now. Uh, do you play as well as Sparky, Miss Pickett? Oh, well, a lot of it is in the practicing. And you are? His mother, and I made him practice every day. I recognized his talent from the very beginning. How do you feel about that, uh, Sparky? Do you owe all of this to your mother and your teacher? Not really. The truth is I did it all alone. I am a self-made artist. It just came naturally. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to change and get back to the hotel. I have to get my rest, you know. Yes, of course. We have been talking to Sparky, the amazing young man who has baffled the whole music world. Now, we return you to our studio. The piano was not pleased to have a burning cigar on its top while Sparky sat at the concert grand. And later that night, as Sparky was walking across the empty stage... Sparky, Sparky. Yeah? We've got to talk. We have to talk? What about? I've told you about the way you've been acting. What do you mean, the way I've been acting? It's your attitude. My attitude? And your swelled head. My swelled head? You forget that I am the one doing the playing. Yeah, I know it's you playing. Well, I guess it is. But they're calling me the genius. Maybe I am. Maybe I really can play. Maybe I could play on any old piano. Sit down on my stool, Sparky. We've got to have a talk, you and I. Not now. Some other time, Piano. I'm on my way to the ice cream parlor. In Washington, D.C., the piano Max had bought in New York was being delivered to the Kennedy Center. You were lucky to find one just like it, and it arrived here in Washington just in time. Still, I... I hope we're doing the right thing. He'll never know the difference. Now we'll find out what the kid has been up to. Easy, boys. Take it right in onto the stage. What if he plays this piano just as well as the other one? What if... Never mind, he won't. You wait and see what's gonna happen. Max... I don't know. You want him back in school, don't you? Sure, but maybe he really can play that well on any piano. The minute vaults in half a minute? Nonsense. It's a trick of some kind, and this will prove it once and for all. You'll see. What Max did not know was that Beans had been watching. He was a smart little dog, and he ran to get Sparky. <laughs> What's the matter, Beans? What is it, boy? There's a large storeroom down the hall. We'll put it there for the time being. Nobody ever goes in, but I'll get a padlock out of my car just in case. When they left, Sparky opened the door and quickly pushed the magic piano back on the stage. Then he and Beans pushed Max's piano into the storeroom just in time before they all returned. Lucky you had that padlock. 
and I have the only key. <laughs> they said the Kennedy Center is totally sold out. I can hardly believe it. The president will be there tonight. So, big deal. Sparky, the president of the United States. This will be the biggest concert of the year. That's okay. I can handle it. Tonight I've got a big orchestra, so I think I'll play some Rachmaninoff. And I'll conduct the orchestra myself, right from the piano. That night, all of Washington turned out to hear Sparky. The president arrived with his motorcycle escort and his secret service man. Then Sparky arrived in his limousine. Thank you. 
You'll have to do an encore. They'll never stop applauding. Why don't you play? I'll decide what to play. Will you stop? Gentlemen, I am going to play the spinning song by Mendelssohn. Oh, no, you won't. What do you mean, I won't, piano? Your time is up. I will no longer play for you. You won't play for me, but you have to. You promised. I made a promise to a nice little boy. But you are not a nice little boy. I'm not a nice little boy? No, you are a spoiled little brat. Like your father said. And I will no longer play for you. Piano, what will I do? All those people out there. They're waiting. You've got to play for me. Piano? You'll play for me. I know you will. Play! Piano, why won't you play for me? Play, piano, play! <laughs> Poor Sparky. Everyone began to laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs> then the president left. What's the matter with you? I... I don't know. I guess I was... I don't know, Mom. Well, you better get ready for dinner. Dad's home and we'll be eating soon. Dad? I've got to talk to him. I've got to explain. Explain what, Sparky? I didn't mean to be like that. I... I... Like what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, nothing, Dad. Nothing. You all right, son? Sure, Dad. Sure. I'm okay. I, uh, just want to practice some more. You, you want, want to, to practice? practice? Yes, I'm going to practice a lot. Until I can play as good as I did in, well, as good as my teacher anyway. I don't think I'll ever understand children. I know what you mean, Martha. Piano? Piano? <sighs> Sparky went back to practicing. I guess it wasn't a magic piano after all. Or was it? <laughs>